Hallelujah. Can we give God praise in the place tonight? Can we stand on our feet and give God a praise? Come on, come on. Give him a shout. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. I thank God for another Wednesday night. Amen, somebody. I'm grateful to see any kind of nights. I know nights is not always celebrated, but I thank God for the night because I know joy comes in the day. Amen, somebody. So if I can get through the night season, come on here. Can we give God a praise on this Wednesday night? Is he not worthy? Welcome, family, to Kingdom Study. Welcome tonight. I'm excited to be here. You may be seated in the presence of the king. Welcome to those who are online with us, who are joining us. We thank God for you. We thank God for your life and your family. We thank God that we can add value to your life. I hope this ministry is adding value to somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. We've been in a series on Sunday called Victoria's Secrets. And absolutely, Sunday was amazing. Amen, somebody. We talked about in between the sheets. So come on here. And if you haven't seen that, I, I, I really, really recommend you. Say, I have to see it again for myself. I said, did the pastor actually go between the sheets? My God. But I pray that it helps somebody and that it really sets somebody free. Amen. That's what we believe here. That's what we want to be. We want to be a church where we just, we just doesn't talk about it, but we be about it. We don't want to just deliver messages. We want to deliver models. You understand what I'm saying? Our children need models. They need examples. Um, they, they need to see people who walk this thing out, and God kept his promise. Amen, somebody. Amen. Somebody say, I'm still waiting on something, but he did do something. Come on here, somebody. I may be waiting on something, but he already done something. Can you let your children know that God is still a provider, that he's still a protector? Oh, God, I ain't got nobody. I got everybody on something else on a Wednesday. For the people who came here to think about God and not your phones, can you let everybody know that God is still a provider? I appreciate the people who are in this place for the king and not for themselves. Amen. And this topic tonight is um, something that I really believe is much needed but hard received in the church because this is where the transition happens from surprise miracles to sustainable miracles. It's at this point to where you really start to see God doing things again and again and again and again, and you stop being so pessimistic about your life and be optimistic about it. You stop waking up with attitudes, and you stop waking up with anticipation. You stop waking up thinking about bad stuff, you stop waking up thinking about good things. Come on here, somebody. There is, there is, a, there is a life you can have when you wake up and you smiling and not frowning. Come on here, somebody. We are believers. I wish I had some believers in the place that said, I can wake up on the right side of the bed, and every day ain't got to be the wrong side. Come on here. Every day ain't got to be chaotic. Every day ain't got to be an argument. Every day we ain't got to be screaming and yelling at something. There is a place where good days do exist consistently. My yesterday was good, and the day before that was good. And the day before that one was good. And my tomorrow is going to be good. Because I'm walking back. Oh, God, I wish I had some faith walkers. I didn't have a good weekend last weekend, but I know for sure I'm going to have a good one this weekend. Oh, I wish I had some declarative people in this place. that say, my weekend will be good. This is going to be a good Christmas for me, whether you got me something or not, baby. My joy is not predicated on what you got me. My joy is predicated on what he did for me. Oh, God, and I'm happy already because I'm celebrating his day. It ain't about me. It's about him. Oh, God. It ain't about you. It's about him. I'm thankful because of who he is, not because of what you did. I may wake up to nothing, but I still got it if I lost everything and didn't have anything. I still will have everything because he is my everything. Come on here. God, I wish I had somebody to know that, that I'm being joyful this weekend. Ain't no frowning. Somebody say, we smiling, baby. Yeah, I'm just going to say it like that. Say, we smiling, baby. It's, it, 
it's bad English, but it's good declaration. We smiling, baby. We smiling, and we're going to be smiling going into this holiday season because we have something to look forward to. Amen. And I want to talk about um, the bridge from expectation. See, this is often time, and this is why this is hard. This is often time where those who proclaim to follow Christ stop. They stop at expectation because they sit back and wait for God to do something. But there is another place beyond expectation. That place is called maturation. See, see, I knew it was going to get quiet. I knew it already because that, that's one of those things we, 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 we don't like to swallow because we want God to do everything while we do nothing. Uh, we want to wait but not wait. We want to wait on God instead of waiting on God. We don't want to serve. We don't, we don't want to wait in God. We don't want to present our bodies. Deliver. We don't want to mature. See, see, the difference between, watch me, the difference between somebody who produces versus somebody, and my last one's going to be reproduction, so I'm going to give you an insight into next week, versus somebody who reproduces is the bridge of maturation. Um, uh, an immature person can produce, yes, but only a, much, a mature person can reproduce. Yes, Come on, your, bo- your kids is a testimony of that right there. Yes, oh, an immature person can produce something, yes, but only a mature person can reproduce something. An uh-huh. uh, uh, immature person can get it one time, but, an immature, uh, but a mature person finds out how to do it every time. When you grow up, you start looking at things a different way to where you say, I didn't just do it one time and be satisfied. I need to see this thing happen again and again and again and again. Somebody say, I want to see it again. You, you have to go from expectation to maturation. Maturation is when, and I'm jumping right into it. Okay, are you ready? I know I'm jumping in, but I, 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 feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm hot in the spirit. I'm, I'm coming this thing hot. So here we go. Maturation is when something has ripened to the point of completion or perfection. I'm going to say it again. Maturation is when something has ripened to the point of completion or perfection. It means that something can look good but not be good if it hasn't matured. Oh, God, help me tonight. It means something can feel good and not be good if it hasn't matured. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? It, it, it means that something, watch this, can, either, can even appease you but not fulfill you because it hasn't matured to be enough for you. When you eat an apple too small, it may taste good, but it won't fill you up to the point to where it is good. Because it's not ripened to the point to where it can fill up what is empty in your. You have to wait for certain things to ripen before you can take a bite out of it. Before you reap it, has it ripened? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Before you reap it, has it ripened? Is there a point by which you have to let this thing stay up underground a little bit longer? Does that make sense? Is there a point by which you have to allow something to grow into its full state, even though it's in a state that may look like it's a good state? It may not be a completed state. Ah, Just because it looks like it's there doesn't mean it's all the way there. Do you hear what I'm saying? Just because a person can, 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 can go to a club or can get something to drink for themselves don't mean they grown. I'm going to lean down on that one. Your ID don't, 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 don't imply that you are of age. I'm, your ID does not m- define your maturity. Did you hear what I said? See, this is why I love kingdom principles, because kingdom principles is not relegated by age. It's relegated by stage. Ah, it's not relegated by how old you are in the physical. It's relegated how much you've been through in the spiritual. So you can be 20 and mature in the spirit, and you can be 50 and a baby. God, I wish I had some people who would tell the truth tonight. And, 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 And the truth of the matter is the only way you really sustain your level of blessing is when you mature. 
is when you have maturation. Watch this. The success, and write this down. Somebody write this down for me because I feel like it blessed me, so I want to bless somebody else. The success of a seed cannot be sustained if it outgrows the store. Oh, God, I'm going to slow it down for some of those who didn't hear me the first time. The success of a seed cannot be sustained if it outgrows the sower. Ha, ha, I'm going to say it again. The success of a seed, listen to me, cannot be sustained if it outgrows the soil. If what you plant it becomes bigger than how you think about it. Yeah. Oh, God. Sam, they told me to sit. I'm trying to. Oh, yeah. If what you planted in the ground becomes bigger than the one who planted it, the one who planted it cannot sustain what's growing from it. Right. Uh -huh. Ah. If we got together in one season and you were bigger than me, but you let me outgrow you, you can't sustain me in the next season because the sea has now outgrown the soil. Oh, God, did you hear what I'm saying? If you plant something in the ground, watch this. If you plant something in the ground and you only learn how to grow it, but you don't never learn how to reproduce it, you can't sustain it. Eventually, what you cannot sustain will die. Yeah. Uh, can, can I help you out with something? The reason why they died in Genesis chapter number three, I'm talking about Adam and Eve, yeah. is not because Eve didn't get, watch this, she didn't get a production from Adam. She got a production because she knew the word. The Bible says that when the, when the, when the serpent came, that, watch this, she quoted what God said, even though she kind of misquoted. But she quoted it, which means, watch me, she got a production. But what you never see is Adam keep going back and reproducing and sustaining what he put in. Yeah. <sighs> he, let the, he let the serpent outgrow him because he never Watch this, reinvest it inside of the thing that the serpent invested in more than he did. Yeah. So the enemy put more into the relationship than Adam did. Yeah. Oh, God, y'all hear what I'm saying? The enemy invested more words into him than Adam did. So you're wondering why people are getting attitudes with you because you don't never support them more than they get mad with you. You never reinvest in them. All the thing you do is tell them one time that they did a good job instead of every day reaffirming the consistency of who they are. Oh, oh. See, that's maturation. Maturation means I continuously pour into you. I'm mature enough to talk to you. Ooh, ooh. I'm mature enough to consistently tell you more than the, more than the, enemy, more than the enemy whispers to you. Mm. Huh. The reason why God is called complete, because he's mature. Why is he mature, Aaron? Because the Bible says he is the word. And he never stops talking to us. He never stops communicating us. He never watches. He never gives us the opportunity to say that somebody else spoke to us more than he did. Right. Right. Oh, God, I wish I had somebody who talked to Jesus right. yeah. and tell him about your problems. Yeah. And, and, and listen, when, when, when I'm talking about talking to Jesus, I'm not just talking about infatuated prayers or cliches or things you just burn it out. I'm talking about having an intimate relationship, yeah. having, having an intimacy with him to where you speak to him and he speaks back to you. Are you sitting there long enough to hear it, or are you so quick that you're only pouring it that you get out of his presence before he can speak back to you? I told you this is one of those. See, this is one of those where if we don't get this right, I promise you it's going to feel like you're in a cycle because you get to the point of expectation, and then you have to go all the way back to procrastination. Why? Because if you just wait for expectation, you're not doing nothing. Oh, God, come on, somebody. The first thing we learned was how to get over procrastination. And now we get to a point where we put something in the ground, we have expectation, and we think we're supposed to stop. God said, that's not it. Watch this. While I'm working on that, I need you working on you. Oh, God. While I'm working on that, I need you, to, well, I need you working on you. What you expect to come to you, God expects to come from you. Oh, I'm going to teach this thing. What you expect to come to you, God expects to come from you. 
Blessed is the man, Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in, uh, in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law that he's made to meditate day and night. And he, watch me, and he, and he, somebody say he, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, who, who, whose, whose leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever, watch this, he doeth. Oh, you missed it. He says, watch this. He said, he is the one who's planted, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, which means I'm going to prosper as long as he's planted. But if he becomes unrooted, even what he does will not prosper. So I'm going to bring to him what I expect from him. Oh, God, I'm going to bless what you do as long as I can bless who you are. When I can't bless who you are, I can't bless what you do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whatever you put in the ground, I need you to understand that's how long I need you to stay in the ground. If you're waiting for something big, I need you to grow and to be something big. If you want God to do something great, I need you to grow and do something great. If you want God to do exceedingly abundantly above all, I need you to sit there, be planted, mature, grow up, and become something that's exceedingly, abundantly, above all people think or say about you. Because the blessing you retain is only predicated by the, by the behavior you by the behavior you reflect. The behavior you reflect is the blessing you retain. So your behavior is supposed to be a mirror to what you expected from God. Ah, oh, I'm supposed to act like I'm rich. Oh, when I'm broke. Oh, because I'm a reflection of the blessing I'm looking to retain. I'm supposed to act like I'm healthy even when I'm sick. Why? Because I'm a reflection of the blessing I'm looking to retain. I'm not supposed to act like I'm sick when I'm sick because the Bible says that there is no sickness in heaven. I'm supposed to act like I'm mature or complete or perfected in him. And I'm supposed to live like what I'm not going through, but what I'm reflecting or expecting from him to do. So I said, I'm a reflection of my blessing. So when you see me, baby, you, you know what I'm looking for. Ah, when you see me, you know what I'm expecting. I keep my car clean because I want to try to keep uh, this next Rolls Royce that we get clean. Oh, y'all can't handle that. Y'all can't handle stuff like that. Y'all can't handle stuff like that. Y'all can't, y'all can't handle stuff like that. I, I buy a lot of people gifts because I want to be able to bless nations and I want to be able, oh, it's the mindset shift. It's maturation. It stops saying God do it for me and starts saying God do it through me. Oh, God, I want to be a whale. Oh, God, I'm feeling that thing right now. I want to be a whale of living water where people can come to me and they can dip and I never run dry because I'm expecting him to bless me so I'm going to behave like, I, oh, God. Oh, God. I'm not going to keep living my life in every three months and having to feel like I got to go through a nervous breakdown. I'm not going to keep doing it. 2022, we ain't known that, baby. 2022, we ain't finna be doing that. We ain't finna be going through cycles and proclivities because somebody want to drain us and God wants to sustain us. No, I'm, I'm maturing to the point to where I say, look at me now. I'm reflecting of what my future is going to be. I said, look at me now. Somebody say, look at me now. Look at me right now. I'm talking about right now, slap me in the face. I'm smiling. Because I see 2022, he going to do what he do. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm smiling. I'm smiling right now. Because in 2022, he going to do what he do. I'm, sm I'm not waiting till I see it. I'm a reflection of my blessing. My God. You cannot have sustainable production in a place you aren't constantly producing. So you have to be constantly producing. Constantly producing. Constantly producing. The, the, th the thing about Joseph, what people uh, um, don't see about his story, was that Joseph actually matured to the point to where he reflected his production or reproduction before they ever needed the reproduction that he manifested for the nations. Before he ever saved up 
seven years of famine, he looked like seven years of famine, uh, of favor, excuse me. Before he ever saved us seven years of fruit, I should say, he looked like seven years of fruit. He didn't look like the famine he was going through. Ah, you know your Bible a little bit? You know your Bible just a little bit. So in Genesis 41, it gets to a point to where, 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 where the Bible talks about Joseph being um, um, second in command because he's getting out of prison. I can't go through the whole story. I really want to. I may have to and just come back to this damn blessing me. Because, because what we miss sometimes is when he told, when he told the baker in prison and, and the butler their dreams, and he told uh, the baker to remember him, and the baker got out and forgot him for two years. When Joseph got out, Joseph wasn't bitter because God had made him better. Oh, God, I can't go nowhere tonight, baby. I'm going to just go on to do what he can I do what he do, honey? When you mature, people mess up. Don't make you upset because you know it's a set up. <laughs> when you mature and somebody else messes up, you don't get upset because you know it's a set up. That's what maturity implies because you're saying the re only reason you messed up is because God is making something up for to set me up because I know I got a place where I'm finna go up. So if you forgot, that means that God has something he needs to work on in me. So why would I waste my time getting mad with you when God is working on me? Woo, y'all don't hear what I'm saying tonight. How can I prove it? When he gets out of jail, he go, they go through the seven years of, uh, of favor, and everybody's prospering, and he has two sons. Watch me now. His two sons, one is Manasseh and one is Ephraim. This is around verse 51. Manasseh, the, the name Manasseh means, watch this. I'm going to give you Ephraim first, and I'm going to bring it back to you. Ephraim is the younger son. Ephraim means that he was fruitful in the land of his affliction. So whenever you name something that, that, that gives a title or description of what, what the, either the person name is of what their life will look like or the situation that's happening right now, it's a description of what you're going through. It's identity. That makes sense? It's identity of circumstance, situation. This is me identifying my situation. He says, I'm going to name you Ephraim, the younger one, the second one, because I'm fruitful in the land of my affliction. He says, but the first one, I'm going to name you Manasseh. The word, the, the name Manasseh means that God made me forget my toil in my father's house. Oh, y'all don't hear what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I'm going to call you Ephraim because I was fruitful. Yeah. But before I got fruitful, I was forgetful. Yeah. Why? Because I stopped being bitter for what you did, and I started looking at what you did as a place of my maturity so God can make me fruitful because I stopped being frail in my immaturity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't hear what I said. Let me break this down to you. Let me break it on. Let me break it on. Let me break it on down. When he says God made me forgetful in the land of my, of my father, he wasn't talking about memory. He was talking about maturation. He was talking about maturity. He didn't imply that God made him forget because if you remember when his brother came, he told him uh, I, I, what you meant for my evil, God meant for my good. So it wasn't a plot of memory loss. It was a plot of maturation uh, increase. It means I matured for how I look at what you did and what you thought was against me actually worked for me. I forgot that you hurt me and I just remember that you helped me. Oh, y'all don't hear what I said. I forgot that I cried, and I remember now I'm smiling. I forgot, watch this, that you tried me, and I remember God was training me. I knew that you want me to think about what you did was evil, but what you thought was evil, God was doing it. Oh, God. So I forgot the evil because God used the evil to work for my good. So I'm no longer mad because I'm too mature to let you con uh, convolute my memory of what you did to make me not fruitful in the land that he gave me. I can reproduce, and while everybody else is on a famine, I can reproduce fruit because I'm mature enough to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Joseph, the only man with fruit. Because he's the maturest out of everybody. How is he the maturest? Because he has the right to be mad. Oh, not just at his brothers, but to be mad at Potiphar because he believed his wife who lied on him. And to be mad at the baker because he forgot about him. But Joseph said, I'm not worried about none of that. Oh, God. I'm mature enough to understand that I've been going through training and that whatever you tried to come against me with it, God was using it for me. Stop trying and train. Oh, God, can I say that one again? Stop trying and train. 
Let me give you a scripture to back it up because 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 I want you to see this. The, the scripture is, is, is Hebrews chapter five, verse 14. It says it says five, verse 14. It says, but solid food is for the spiritual mature. This is the amplified version. Whose senses, watch this, are trained by practices to distinguish between what is morally good and what is evil. I'm going to read it again because y'all didn't catch it. He says, but solid food. See, he's talking about, the, the author of Hebrews is talking about the, the, the church at the time being mature. And he starts by talking about spiritual milk and things that you really cannot chew up. Because there is a point in your faith that you can remain immature even though you're saved. Ah, that you can be blessed babies. And you can be old. And he says there is a point to where you have to come off milk and go to solid food. And he says this is how you do it for spiritual mature who senses. Somebody say my senses. Are being trained by practice. Here it is. To distinguish between what is morally good and evil. It says that God is allowing people to get on my last. Oh, God, I wish I had somebody to say you got on not the first or the second, but the last. Um, you, he's allowing people to get on my last nerve. So that I can stop trying to look like him and start being trained to look like him. He's getting, letting people get on my last nerve, which is the practice of them um, exercising my senses, my ear gate, my eye gate, my tongue gate, my nose gate, and my touch gate. He's, he's allowing people to exercise my senses so that I can, here we go, distinguish. God, y'all going to make me get sweaty all day. He's making me. Listen, he's making me train so that I can see the train coming before I get off the track. So he's training me, mama, so that by the time something comes against my eyes, my ears, my nose, my smell, and my touch, I know how to distinguish who you are regardless of who you are. He's training me to see evil and good and not to see man and woman or husband and wife or brother and sister. He says, no, baby, it ain't got nothing to do with that because I'll use the very people that's close to you to get on your last one just to train you. I'll use those right next to you to get on your very last one to train you. And if you get stuck in who they are, you'll never distinguish between what they bring in. They bring in something against you just to train you. And you instead of getting mad at them when I'm trying to get you to be more mature, and you ain't understanding that the only reason they're getting on your last nerve is because they're on an assignment from me. I sent them so that you can spiritually get out of the place where you sent you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You sent yourself to a place of comfort. I sent you to a place of increase. You sent yourself to a place to settle. I sent you to a place to be a sanctified uh, uh, woman of God. You sent yourself to a place to where you think you ain't got to pray. I'm going to make sure you get on your knees every other night and the midnight hour. Why? Because I called you to train you. And I'm going to do it through your senses. Somebody say, I sent something. Yeah, Jesus, I sent something. I wish I had somebody in some warfare that said, I got my senses working. That I see the enemy coming against me. I hear him. I mean, my God, my hand almost touched him the other night. <laughs> Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I can smell him, and he's so close, I taste him sometimes. But I'm learning from him. Did you hear what I said? I said, I'm learning from them. I'm learning because I'm being trained to be able to see how that spirit looks when it comes against me. So that regardless of what clothes you put on, I know who you really are beneath the wardrobe. I can see you coming from a mile away. So how does he train us? James chapter 1. Here we go. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Let me get to it. Here we go. James chapter 1, verse number 2. He says, my brethren, count it all joy. <laughs> well, I can stay right there. He says, count it all joy. 
He says, if you know how to count anything, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials or to diverse temptation, your King James Version would say, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Oh, somebody say I'm getting patience. Y'all ain't saying like y'all really getting it. Say it like you mean. Somebody say I'm getting patience. Yeah, yeah, this season is definitely producing some patience. Oh, God, I ain't got nobody to be honest on a Wednesday night. Somebody say I'm getting patience. But let patience have its perfect work. Ha! That you may be perfect and complete, which is our definition for spiritually mature. Why? Because I don't want you to lack Ha! God says when they get through with you, you ain't going to be lacking nothing. God, can I tell you how he told me? Can I tell you how he encouraged me? Can I give it to somebody? God says if you make it through this, you can make it through anything. Oh, God. He says if you deal with this person, you can deal with anybody. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He says if you can hold your tongue in this situation. There is not one situation that you can't go through to where you can't control yourself. He said, so you need to stop getting mad when people get on your nerve and understand that you're actually gaining something inside of you that you never had before, but you now got a fruit of the spirit. If you think you didn't have self-control before, you got it now. If you think you ain't had the ability to endure long suffering, you got it now. If you think you don't know what perseverance is, go check the mirror. Last three months, you have to persevere through. He says, he says, I'm sending you through. Here's what I love. Various trials. Somebody say I'm on trial. He says you're going through. Here we go, Joe. You're going through legal, legal persecution. Legal persecution. Because I'm sending it. You're going through legal persecution because the power of your triumph is only defined by the power of your testimony. Ah, how powerful your testimony is. It's how powerful my triumph will be. So you can't really say, listen to me, can I, can I make this really, 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 really play? You can't really say you're mature and you ain't been through nothing. You can't really say that your marriage is mature and ain't been through nothing. Why? Because restriction is the friction that provides maturation. Did did you hear me? Restriction is the friction that provides maturation. God sends restrictions to the point to where you feel like sometimes that you're in a tight situation. Oh, I wish I had somebody to feel like I just want to bust loose. And I just want to let loose. And I just want to let this thing go. But God is sending restriction because he's using that as the friction for your maturation. Because he's trying to get you not to feel like you're lacking, but so that you can lack nothing. So I want to do this. I got about 15 minutes. I'm going home. I want to show you because this is this is heavy and I'm going to have to do something else with it because I got too much. I just want to show you the four stages uh, or the four ages, I call it, of of maturation, okay? So go to Galatians chapter 4. Here we go. So there about, and and write this down, 2 Peter, write this down for your own study. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9. That's where you'll find the eight stages. So I'm I'm going to lay this out for you real quick. There's eight stages, eight stages of maturation. These are the four ages. So what do you mean? Here we go. I'm going to make it real plain. You live in a house. And you grow up in that house. Those are your ages. Okay? And, th- and within that house, you have a backyard. That's a stage. Are you with me? That's an area. Within that stage, you plant seeds. That's where your fruit bears. So, for every maturity, it's just like physical. When you have four stages of physical development in the spirit, you do as well. To where you grow up in each age. But up under each age, you got eight stages you got to complete. You got about eight backyards. Because each of your backyards need all nine of the fruits of the spirit. Oh, see, I'm trying to teach you something. 
Because you, you're trying to figure out sometimes why you feel like you're going through so much. God says, because I'm taking you from stage to stage, from faith to faith to glory. That's how we put it in our, faith, in, in, in our theological construct. It's from faith to faith, to glory to glory, but it's from stage to stage. I'll, I'll give it to you real quick. This is 2 Peter. But stay in Galatians. I'm going to read 2 Peter 1, 5 to 9. I ain't even going to read it. I'm just going to read you the eight stages. Here we go. Eight stages. Faith. He says, add to your faith virtue. Add to your virtue knowledge. Add to your knowledge self-control. Add to your self-control perseverance. Add to your perseverance godliness. Add to your godliness brotherly kindness. And add to brotherly kindness love. And Paul, I mean, excuse me, Peter says that if you get these things, there is not a season where you will be unfruitful. Do you hear me? I wish I could go through all of my have the time, but I, I'm giving you all eight. Faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, love. He says, if you get these, you won't be unfruitful. So what are the fruit? The fruits are the things. These are like eight territories or backyard. These are realms, we call it. So eight realms God puts you in, eight stages. And in each of these levels or stages, you have to plant seeds because salvation comes with seeds. What are the seeds? The seeds are the fruits of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5. Nine, nine fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, justness, self-control. Does that make sense? Did I make sense? So we, those are stages, and those, those are fruits. The question is, watch this, at every age group, at every age group, you have to develop them. It's just like your child. You don't wait till they get 20 to start loving. You want to see them loving at five? That's how God wants to see you. When you're born again, you don't skip from zero to, a, to, to, to 25 in the spirit. You have to go through a process. You have to mature. That makes sense? You have to go through maturation. And, and just like in physical development, you got your infancy, you got your, um, your, 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 your early childhood, you got your adolescence, and you got your adulthood. You got those four stages. That's the same way in the spirit. In the spirit, you got four stages to where you have to manifest all of these things in these stages. I need you to love people even when you're two. I need you to be kind to people even when you're six. If your child is 12, you ain't letting them get off the hook. Because they want to do something that right now. Yo, you said you got to wait. That's long suffering. And if you're going to talk back at 13, self-control going to hit you right in the. God, I wish I had somebody to understand what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So can I give you these four stages and we go home real quick? Okay. Galatians chapter number four. You should be there by now. If you ain't found it by now, I'm going to pray for you even harder. Galatians, you're going to the top of the prayer list, Shelby. Galatians chapter number four. <laughs> Verse number one. Here it is. He says, now I say, I'm going to read this thing from the New King James Version. That the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Did you see that? Though he is master of all. But is, here goes the first, under. He's under guardian or tutor. And stewards or governors until the time appointed by the father. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under elements of the world. You see that? Verse four. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who are under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Do you see that? Does everybody see those four things right there? Okay, I'm going to just give them to you because I really don't have time to, to, to go through them, and I feel like i got to give them the way God gave them to me. Four things you are under so that you can progress in each stage. One, you're under a guardian. Two, you're under a steward. Three, you're under elements of the world. Four, you're up under the law. I'm going to give it to you in my peace. Can I give you my peace? One, you're under parenting. That's guardianship. When you learn how to mature, that you can receive something that you can't feed yourself with. Yup, here we go. Maturity is being able to let people help you when you can't help you. Uh -huh. See, we think it's mature when we want to do everything on our own. That's not mature, that's pride. I knew this was going to be a tough one, Tamika. Maturity says, I don't know how to do this right here because I'm a baby in this area. And we all got emphases in certain areas, so I'm okay with letting you feed my needs. Ah. 
I'm mature enough to come to you as a guardian or somebody who oversees this area so that you can give me mouth malnutrition and I won't die because man shall live by bread alone, not by bread alone, excuse me, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. And I can't hear God in this area because I'm too much of a baby to understand the language and the language in this particular God. So I need parenting or guardianship until I understand, understand the language in certain areas. That's why some of our relationships break before it ever gets started, because we don't first learn the fact that before we talk, you got to tell me what language you're speaking. Oh, that was good and all by itself. Before we even get into this conversation, I need to understand what type of mentality you have when you're talking. Because if you start talking to me and I'm a baby or if I don't understand this at the level you understand it, your blah, 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 one, 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 go sound like Charlie Brown going in my ear. And I really won't understand what you're saying. Won't, 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 won't. And oftentimes that's what we hear even though we say I understand you, we really don't. Because we are, because we have, and this word guardian is, is new plus, in, in the Greek, it, it means you're a baby with infancy. It, it literally means that you're untrained or unskilled or untaught. It literally, it literally means, watch this, that when you step into a specific realm, you are learning something you've never learned before. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why it's important when you go and you live uh, uh, somewhere with somebody that you understand the language of the house. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's God, this microphone ain't on. That's why when you come to a church, you have to first understand the culture and the language yeah. of the church. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. That's why when you get into a, a friendship with somebody, it's always good to first sit down and understand what type of language they speak in. Because watch me now. If you are a person who's an optimist and they're a person who's a pessimist and y'all talking to the same, about the same thing, even though you're talking about the same thing, you speak in two different languages. Because one of y'all says it's going to get better. The other one said it ain't going to never get better. And even to that degree, if somebody is an optimist and you're a believer, they may say it will get better, but you're going to say it's God who's going to make it better. Y'all I don't understand what I'm saying. I need to know your language. I need some parental development. The second one, he says, steward, that's possessive. That's your possession. The first one is knowing who you are. That, that word guardianship means that, 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 that actually during the day of, uh, of the Roman Empire, there were slaves who were guardians of master. That's why I say, even though you're a master of all, you're still a slave because you can't possess it when you want to. Because they used to put slaves who were mature over uh, uh, certain um, kings and rulers or prince princes, I should call them, or princesses, to guard them and not make them, uh, um, not make them abuse their power. Yeah. There is nothing worse than putting a kid in a king's seat. <laughs> when you get power, you only become more of what you already are. So they, their job was to steward over the power until they became mature. And, and, and they say, first, we got to make sure you know who you are, parental. Secondly, we got to know what you got. See, sometimes you don't know what you have until you mature. God, I wish I had some people who said you left the best thing you didn't even know you had. Oh, you see, y'all don't even believe in y'all self like that. See, you, when you mature... When you mature, you start to realize that certain things that used to be valuable. When you mature, you start to realize that certain things that used to have all your attention. When you mature, you, you realize that certain things that used to get your energy. God, I wish I had somebody that knew what they had. I know my time now. I didn't know it then. I used to waste it on stuff, but I know my time is numbered. As Job said, my, teach me how to number my days that I may know how to value my life. I know now who I really am. And right now, because I know who I am, I can't waste what I got. Ah, it may be just a couple bucks to you, but to see to me. Did you hear what I said? You asking for this is not so much as me being me being mean. It's that you're trying to take what God told me to put in the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's maturity. I'm talking about different levels here. Do you understand the reason why maturity is, 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 is in the realm of possessing? Let me help you understand it. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, when God used to uh, ask them for certain items, and I talked to you about this, I think, last week, he used to t tell them, you have to give me what comes out of the ground first. 
first. Why? Because that tells me that you believe that one, one, that you believe I'm the one who gave it to you. But two, you're mature enough to understand that you can trust me to give it to you again. See, only immature people want selfishness over selflessness. God. Maturity is you becoming more selfless and less selfish. That's what maturity means. So God built a system so that you can sacrifice, so that you can stop saying when stuff grow out the ground, I don't grow with it. You can stop saying, God, when this grow, me too. If you give it to me, I'm giving it back to you. If you let me have it, you can have it too. You are the one who possesses it. It belongs to you. I know what I got. Here it is. What do you have? I got everything because I got the one who owns everything. See, I wish you knew what you got. If you knew what you got, you'll never say I'm lacking anything. Why are you crying about what you ain't got when what you ain't got is more than what people will never see that they had in their life? Your little bit is worth more than most people greatest possess. The Bible says that the woman gave two cents into the offering and Jesus stopped the whole uh, processional and said she gave more than everybody else. Why? Because she gave all she had. Somebody say, I'm giving them all I got. God, I'm giving you the best of me. I'm, I wish Anita was in this room. He says, I'm, I'm giving you everything because you are my everything. See, that's maturity of possessions. That's why they have to be, that's why somebody has to govern that area because the, those masters didn't know what they had. My question to you is, are you a master of all, but all you think you got is nothing? Huh. Are you, watch this, an, an heir who thinks you inherited air. <laughs> Come over here. Do you look at your surrounding as nothing? Or do you say, this is just capacity for God to fill everything? Yeah. Come on here. I'm maturing in this thing. I'm not just expecting God, but I'm maturing on me. I'm, I'm going to live a life where my disposition reflects the fact that I'm believing God to fill something that looks underdeveloped. I look underdeveloped now, but my disposition don't show it. I have a disposition of myself that I'm going to stand straight up even when I feel like bending over. Do you hear what I'm saying? I got a disposition in myself that I'm going to be a mother when I don't feel like it. It's my disposition. I got a disposition I'm going to be a father when I don't want to be a father. It's just who I am. I'm going to pay the bills when I don't want to pay the bill because I'm looking at something greater than what I see right now. I don't, under, I, I don't get caught up in what I don't got. I get caught up in who I do have, and because I got the one who owns it all, I got it all. That's maturity. Maturity says I can, watch this. Maturity says I grow it to give it. Oh, that's too mature for somebody. I wish you knew how good that word was right there. Mama, maturity says I grow it to give it. That means, God, as much as you let me grow it, I'll give it away. Because if I give it away, you'll let me grow it again. I would always rather be the giver than the receiver. I don't never want to be the person collecting hand up. I always want to be the one handing it out. Because if I hand it out, that means I got more to give it to. I never run out if I'm going to hand it out. I never run low if he used me to hand it to you. Baby, I can always give it. I may not always get it. That's why he told him in the Old Testament, Leviticus 19 and 23, he says, when you reap a harvest, don't glean the corners. He says, let the poor people and, and, and let the fathers have the corners. I, I, in my own context, I said, let them work them corners. I know, pray for them. But he says, let, he says, he says, let them have the corners. <laughs> pray for me. He says, let them have the corners. Why? He says, because I need you to understand that I've given you more than what you need. And they can have the little bit because you got so much more than your little bit. Stop. Oh, God, 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 help me right here. Help me right here, Holy Ghost. Stop trying to scrape every penny together like you are worth the pennies. You are worth more than what you try to scrape together. You are worth more than a little scrap that people say they can throw at you. Baby, you're worth more than that. You leave stuff for other people. Oh, God, I wish I had some kingdom. Do I got anybody kingdom on the phone? I leave stuff for other people. I don't have to glean everything. I'm going to leave a few things because my objective is not to get everything. It's to give some things. So he has per, uh, parental, you have possessive, and then he says the elements of the world. The elements consider the principalities or the principles. Principles. The elements implies a ranking. 
or a standard progression. It literally means that you are still being ruled by the ABCs of the world. Guess what word was used in the Greek? Math. I said, oh, here we go. It was one of my favorite words. Math. <laughs> I said, what, 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 what does that word mean? It means to count somebody. No, it, 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 says, it, <laughs> it says the elements of the world are the ABCs or one, two, threes, or the math. It, it literally says, because during the Old Testament, they used to regulate their seasons by uh, certain things that were harvest to grow out of the ground. So when stuff harvested, that's when they said there's a there's a crop or there's a first fruit. When certain things grew up, they would go and worship God because something grew. If nothing grew, they wouldn't go and present an annual. And Paul is saying you are relegating your life by the elements or you're dependent on the rain, the wind, the, the sun, the moon, the sign. He says you got to understand that you're not a seasoned believer until the right sun control your seasons. <laughs> ah! He says you ain't seasoned until the right sun control your seasons. If you get mad because it's raining today, you don't know who raining today. Oh, God, I wish that. If you get mad because the sun didn't come out, you don't know that the sun is really out. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He says, if you got mad, watch this. Here it is. If you got mad because you count $1 plus $1 equal $2, you don't know how much money you really got. Because if you understood how to count, you will know that when you get 10%, you're giving a whole. So if God calls t uh, 10% $100, that means it costs my one at least 10. Every time I count one, I multiply. See, you don't know how. This is kingdom talk. Twenty-four hours to God is equal to eight million seven hundred and sixty thousand hours. That's math. I'll give it to you in biblical terms. The Bible says a day is equal to a thousand years. A thousand years is eight million seven hundred and sixty thousand hours, and that equals twenty-four hours. Pastor, what you talking about? God says if you really understood who I was, the way you count. You will understand that even though it's 24 hours, uh -huh. it equals 8, 7, 6. 6 is the number of man. Yeah. 7 is the number of completion. Uh -huh. 8 is the number of new beginning. He said you will understand that your day equals you, a man, stepping into your completion, starting your new beginning. So every day you wake up, you got a new beginning because you made it through another day. And God completed what he did on yesterday and perfected my yesterday. I'm mature because I'm not letting my yesterday creep into my, oh God, I'm going to get happy all by my, I wasn't supposed to do it. I ain't letting my yesterday spill over into my today. Today is the day that the Lord has. I'm going to rejoice. <laughs> so if you go into parental, go on possessions, go on principles, he said, you're not under the law, which is precepts. Precepts is the written word. He said, watch me, you're not bound by the rules interpreted by man. <sighs> Do you remember when Jesus steps on the scene? He steps on the scene in, in the book of Matthew after John uh, uh, goes to jail. He steps up and he starts teaching what we call the Beatitudes in Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. We, we, we call it the Sermon on the Mount because he's on top of a mountain. And in this Sermon on the Mount, he used these phrases often. He says, you have heard it was said, yeah. but I say. Yeah. God, I wish you understood your maturity. And God, he says, if you understood how mature you are, you will stop letting people inter interpret your relationship with me. And you will start getting your own definition of who I am in your life. You heard it was said, but what I say. Ah, oh, you heard you couldn't do it, but what I say, you heard you had to go on welfare, but what I say, you heard you had to get help to pay your bills, but what I say, you heard you needed somebody to come for you, but what I say, you think you need a man, baby, what I say, you think you need somebody there, what I say, I know. You live in accustomed to the rules of the law that brings forth death in your Bible. Yeah. Romans 7 tells us. The law broke forth death. Why? Because the law told me what I couldn't. <laughs> Can I be honest? 
The reason why this is hard is because most of us live a life based on faith of what we can't do. Every time, every time we leave the church, the enemy comes in like a flood. And stuff happens to remind us of what we don't have, what we can't do, who we can't talk to, what we can't overcome, what we can't conquer, what I got to deal with, the, pe- the children I got, the bills I got are stacked up, the debt I got. Somebody, the collection ain't going to call as soon as you get in the car. Y'all don't even hear what I'm saying. I'm telling they're going to call as soon as you get in the car. You're going to swipe left. As soon as, as soon as. I get, as soon as you get in the car, something's going to happen. Why? Because as long as it can keep you thinking yeah. that you can't, you will never live the maturity of you can. Did you hear what I said? He says, I came under the law to redeem you out of the law because you are under the law. Do you know what the word redeem mean? I came to buy you back. But watch this. I'm such a good God. I came in the place you was. And paid the price that they said that you own. And not pay it from heaven. I paid it from earth. Just in case they try to tell you and remind you that you still owe something. I need you to remind them I paid it all. That I don't know nothing. It's not that I can't, baby. I can. It's not because I got a God who did it. But I got a Jesus who came down. Who was able to sympathize with my weaknesses. Who knew what I was about to go through. He stepped right in where I was. And he says, I'm paying for you. Not the person that you are not. The person you very are. I love you. I I see you. I want you. You are mine. Stop saying people what you can't. I spent all of me to get all of you. I spent all of me to get all of you. I paid everything of, of my life to get everything back for your life. So stop living up under rules of what you can't. And start having faith about what I can. Stop talking about in three years something going to happen. I can do it in three days. Come on here, somebody. Stop talking about in two, in two months something going to Baby, I can do it in two minutes. If you stop putting rules on me, if I build up my money, I don't need your money. I own a cattle on a thousand. Oh, God. I bring money out of fish's mouth. I don't need your little chump change. I need you to believe. And I need you to mature in the area of precepts, my written law. If you can... He says, go through each of these stages of the ages and mature. You won't be like that rich man in Matthew 19. Who came asking Jesus, what must he do to be saved, to enter into the kingdom? And Jesus says, you know the commandments. He said, yeah, I did those. He said, oh, you mature in that area, huh? Give it up. All you got. Ah, and follow me. The man said he walked away sad. Why? Because although he was mature in one area, he was immature in another. And he was lacking something. When the truth about it is God was trying to get him to lack nothing. And right, right around that text when he when he when when, when that happens. The, the, the theologians believe that Jesus took his disciples to the upper room. He had the conversation and said, whatever you've given up in this life, I'm going to give it back to you. And this one and the one to come and the one to come. Listen to what the man missed. If he just would have gave it up then, God would have gave it back to him in a matter of a few days. What, what blessing is your immaturity keeping you from manifesting in your life? What blessing that you feel like you got to do it yourself and you can't ask nobody for help and you can't give up your possessions and you can't change your principalities, your principles in your own mind? 
your methodology, methodic, methodia is the Greek word for it. That's what the, that's what the wiles of the devil is called because he plays on your method. He plays on how you do things. And you can't give up your interpretation of God because somebody told you that's how it has to be. Baby, it ain't got to be like that. It don't have to be like that. Just because they've never seen God do it don't mean he can't. Just because you ain't never seen God do it don't mean he can't. Don't let your never turn into a forever. Just because he's never do it don't mean he, he's, he won't forever do it. Listen. God says I need you to mature because maturation bridges the gap from expectation to reproduction. And when you mature, everything that comes to you has to keep coming. Because you understand it ain't all for you. And I give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. I'll keep blessing you as long as you can keep maturing in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we have God of praise tonight. Come on.